In this video, we're going to look at balancing disproportionation reactions using the half reaction method. Uh, we'll look at an example of balancing an acid, and then we'll look at an example where the reaction is balanced in a basic environment. So a disproportionation reaction is when the same species is both oxidized and reduced. So as a reminder, oxidation is electron loss and reduction is electron gain. So when a species is both oxidized and reduced, it means it both loses electrons and gains electrons, which may seem counterintuitive because you might be like, well, does that mean there's no reaction? Technically, no. Um, Disproportionation reactions uh, often aren't spontaneous, but uh, do occur. And in a disproportionation reaction, what you'll often see is one species, so say something like um, N2 gas, uh, changing or breaking down into two, two different uh, compounds. So this reaction is not balanced. It's a skeleton reaction that we would have to balance, which we'll get into in the next step. But we're just going to use this as an example of uh, where electrons are going. So in nitrogen, our oxidation number is zero. It's elemental nitrogen. In NH4, uh, hydrogen is going to have an oxidation number of plus one in a molecular compound. So nitrogen here will have an oxidation number of minus three. So we get that because hydrogen is plus one and there's four of them. So it has a total of plus four. With the overall charge of plus one, nitrogen must be minus three in that compound. So going from nitri or elemental nitrogen to ammonium, we see that we have reduction. We have electron gain. So in this case, uh, the nitrogen atom has gained three electrons. If we look at nitrate, NO3 minus. Uh, again, we know that oxygen is in an elemental com or a molecular compound, so minus two. Total is minus six. Uh, because the total charge is minus one, we can then deduce that nitrogen must be plus five. So going from elemental nitrogen to nitrate, we see oxidation, where each nitrogen atom gains five elect or loses five electrons. And so the balancing of this gets a little bit trickier because we have to use this species in both half reactions. But when this species breaks down, it both loses electrons and gains electrons to form two different products. One telltale sign of a disproportionation reaction is you'll have an element in one spot in the reactants and in two different compounds in the products. It's not always going to be disproportionation because oxygen and hydrogen are often in that situation, but it might be. So always check if you see an element once in the reactants and twice in the products. Check if it's disproportionation because then there's some helpful tricks to balancing those types of problems. We are going to start by balancing a disproportionation reaction in acid using the half reactions method. So typically when we're looking at a disproportionation reaction, we're going to see uh, one chemical species in the reactants split into two different species in the products. We could confirm that this was a disproportionation before we go to balance by looking at the oxidation numbers. So chlorine gas is going to have an oxidation number of zero because it's in its elemental form. Chlorine in a, as a chloride ion will have an oxidation number of minus one. And in perchlorate, chlorine has an oxidation number of plus seven. So in going from elemental chlorine to chloride, uh, we have a reduction reaction with a gaining of electrons. And in going from chlorine gas to perchlorate, we have an oxidation reaction with a loss of electrons. So we can balance these two reactions separately and then bring them together at the end. So we'll start with our reduction reaction. So it's a little bit more simple. So we're gonna have chlorine gas forming chloride. First thing we want to do is balance any non um, any elements that aren't oxygen and hydrogen. We can see here we have two chlorines in our reactants and only one in our products. So we're going to add a two 
in front of chlorine or chloride, sorry, um, that's going to give us balanced elements, except now we don't have balanced or we never had balanced charge. So we have a total charge of zero on our reactants and a total charge of minus two on our products. Electrons are always added to the more positive side. In this case, that is our reactant. So we are going to gain two electrons. So we have a balanced reduction half reaction now. Um, and the only thing we might have to do to this is multiply it by a whole number to match electrons with our oxidation half reaction. So our oxidation half reaction is going to start off with chlorine gas reacting to form perchlorate. Again, first thing we want to do is balance um, every element except for oxygen and hydrogen. Once again, two, two chlorines here, one here. So we'll throw a two in front of perchlorate. Now we want to balance oxygens. Uh, we can see that we have zero oxygens um, on our reactant side and we have eight oxygens on our product side. So that means that we're going to add eight water to our reactant side. Uh, now we can look at hydrogen. So we have a total of 16 hydrogens on our reactant side uh, and a total of zero hydrogens on our product side. So we're going to add 16 hydrogens to our products. And then lastly, we can balance charge. So products, uh, we have an overall charge of uh, positive 14. So that comes from 16 protons and then two uh, perchlorate ions, and we have a total charge of zero on our uh, reactant side. So we need to add electrons to our products, and we need to add 14 electrons. So now we have our balanced oxidation reaction. In order to balance these two reactions against each other, we need the number of electrons lost, which is 14, to equal the number of electrons gained, with it, which is 2. This is not the case yet, so we're going to multiply our reduction reaction by 7 and our oxidation reaction by 1. That's going to give us 14 electrons lost, 14 electrons gained. So we can add these two reactions together now. And I'm going to write all of the species, even the redundant ones, so we can see the cancellation. So uh, we are going to have uh, 14 electrons gained from our reduction reaction, plus 7 chlorine gas, also from our reduction reaction. From our oxidation reaction, we'll have 8 water, 1 chlorine gas, uh, and that's all of our reactants. Uh, from our oxidation, we'll have uh, two perchlorates, uh, 16 hydrogens, 14 electrons. And then from our reduction reaction, we'll have 14 chloride ions. So uh, the only redundant species we can cancel here are the electrons. We have 14 Gain, uh, lost and 14 gained. So we can rewrite this reaction now, omitting the electrons. So we'll have, uh, one thing we can do to simplify is we can combine our chlorines to form 8Cl2. Because we have the same species uh, appearing in two spots on our reactants. So we'll have 8 chlorine gases plus 8 water molecules, forming two perchlorate ions, uh, 16 hydrogens, and 14 chloride ions. Now this might appear done, and the reaction is in fact balanced, but if you look at the coefficients, you'll see that they're all even numbers, 8, 8, 2, 16, and 14. All of these coefficients are divisible by 2. We always want to reduce a reaction to the lowest whole number coefficients. 
So we're going to divide the reaction by 2. This will give us a final balanced reaction of 4 chlorine gas plus 4 water to form 1 perchlorate plus 8 hydrogen ions plus 7 chloride ions. We can check its balance now. We have 8 chlorines on both sides of the reaction, 8 hydrogens, and 4 oxygens. So we have a balanced reaction. Overall charge is 0 on our reactants. Negative 1 plus negative 7 is negative 8, plus positive 8 is also 0 on our products. So we have a balanced reaction. Um, because when we balance this, we basically doubled this chlorine gas species by putting it in both half reactions, we ha ended up having to divide this by two at the end. This is the simplest way to balance this rather than trying to maintain a coefficient of one. This final step of dividing by two is much easier to do than dealing with fractions um, while you're balancing up here. All right, so next up we're going to balance in base. So our disproportionation reaction in base is a manganese reaction. Um, again, we see this that we have manganese in one spot in the reactants and two in the products. We can check the oxidation states to, double, to know that it's um, disproportionation. So in uh, this compound, manganese has an oxidation state of plus three. Uh, it's plus two as a manganese two ion and plus four in MnO2. So uh, going from uh, this compound, manganese 3 oxide to manganese 2, we have reduction. Manganese 3 oxide to manganese 4 oxide, we have oxidation. Okay, to balance this, we're going to write both our half reactions. Um, and we're balancing in base this time, but as a reminder, we start that by balancing in acid and then add hydroxides at the end. So our first half reaction will be the reduction of manganese. So I'm going to write M and 2O3 is reduced to Mn2+. First thing we want to do is balance out our manganese. In our, in our reactants, we have two manganese. However, in our products, we just have the one. So we need to double that up. Then we want to balance our oxygens. We have three oxygens in our reactants, no oxygens in our products. So we're going to add three water to the products to balance that out. Uh, and then we can look at hydrogens. We have six hydrogens now in our uh, product, or yeah, in our products, and we have zero hydrogens in our reactants. So we're going to add six hydrogen ions. To the reactants and then lastly we can balance charge. We have a charge of plus six in our reactants and plus four in our products so that means that we add two electrons to our reactants. So we have a balanced reduction reaction. We're going to do the same thing for oxidation. So we'll take our manganese three oxide and oxidize it to form manganese 4 oxide. Uh, so first thing we want to do again, we want to balance the manganese. So we have two manganese in our reactants and just one in our product. So we double that up. Now we want to balance oxygens using water. We have three oxygens in the reactants and we have four oxygens because as a reminder, we need to include that coefficient now, so 2 times 2. Four oxygens in our products, so we're going to add one water to our reactant. Now we want to balance our hydrogens using H+. We now have two hydrogens in the reactants and none in the products. So we're going to add two H pluses to our product. And then lastly, we want to balance charge. We have a charge of 0 in our reactants and a charge of 2 plus in our products, so we're going to add 2 electrons. It happens to be the case here that the number of electrons lost in oxidation is equal to the number of electrons gained in reduction. 
so we don't have to multiply by any whole number coefficients. Because of that, we can cancel out redundant species right away. So we have three water in our products here and one in our reactants. So we can cancel the water in our reactants, leaving us with two waters in the products. We have six hydrogens in our reactants here and two in our products. So we're going to cancel out those two, leaving us with four waters here and our electrons will also cancel. So when we add these together, we're going to have uh, four hydrogen ions plus, and we're gonna add the Mn2O3s together. So we have two of those That's going to form two manganese two plus ions plus, ooh, I'm going to run out of room here. I'm going to write my products below. So I'm just going to erase that and then I'll just write my products below here. So we're going to have two manganese two plus ions, uh, two manganese four oxides, and two waters. Now before we add hydroxides to balance and base, we can simplify this. We again have all even number coefficients, so we're going to divide this entire reaction by 2. Save us some time for the, the next step. So that's going to give us two hydrogen ions plus one manganese three oxide to form manganese two ions plus manganese dioxide plus water. So that's balanced. We have charge balancing and all of our elements are balanced. But since this is taking place in a base, we need to cancel out these hydrogen ions. And we do that by adding an equal number of hydroxides to both sides of the reaction. So we'll add two hydroxides here that's going to form two water, and we'll add two hydroxides here. So two hydroxides to the reactants, two hydroxides to the products. Um, one of those hydroxides, or sorry, one of those uh, waters that we formed is going to cancel out with the water that was already in our balanced reaction, and we will be left with uh, one water, plus uh, one manganese three oxide to form one manganese two plus ion. Oh, still don't have room. Keep making the same mistake. So one manganese two ion, one manganese four oxide, and two hydroxide ions. We can double check that this is balanced now. We have two hydrogens on both sides of the reaction. We have uh, four oxygens total, uh, and we have two manganeses. So we have balanced our disproportionation reaction in base. So balancing in base is that extra step of adding hydroxides at the end. But the first part is the exact same as balancing an acid. So if you can balance an acid, you can balance in base. If you can balance an acid, you can balance a disproportionation reaction in base. You just have to watch out for um, coefficients that can be reduced and remember to add hydroxide.